Hey guys, welcome back. So this is one of the examples we had on our current assignment, which is make a Photoshop or Illustrator masterpiece. And so I wanted to kind of do a demonstration on what it would look like, uh, the process would look like to create this kind of photography technique. It's uh, actually really easy and it's fun to do. So I'm going to go through the steps. Okay, so basically I have Photoshop open and this is just a blank document. Uh, I put this reference shot in here on this layer. This is just our reference to look at. But what we have here is I'm going to use this really cool image that <clears throat> I got off the internet. <clears throat> so I think what we'll do is the opposite of this guy, which is uh, going to be cool. So instead of the eyes being colored, the exterior is going to be colored on ours. Okay, so what I see here is they have um, basically a square that they took here, or not a square, a rectangle, this, this area. So let's get that. Um, I'm going to take the rectangle marquee tool, and let's just pick a, a great area to be this area will be gray, okay? So I selected an area, I'm gonna hit copy and paste. And now we have uh, a layer right here. And so we're gonna make this area gray. So this layer right here, let's just call it uh, gray eyes. And let's, let's uh, just so we don't get confused, let's call this our uh, color girl. So we've named our layers, okay? Um, so I'm going to go to the layer that says gray eyes, and it looks like this. And so if I have that layer selected, I can go up to image, adjustments, and desaturate it. That'll turn it to a grayscale. Now if I turn back on my layer that's colored, I have this situation. I have show transform controls checked up here. Let's uncheck it. Okay, so that's what it, that's what it looks like so far. Okay, so let's look at our reference image. Do you see this uh, brush stroke type thing? Let's do that part. So we'll get rid of our reference image by hitting the eyeball here. And let's make sure that our gray eyes are selected. I'm going to go to our paintbrush, and I'm going to I'm going to grab our paintbrush. I'm going to right click and change the brush tool to like something rough like this. If I uh, hit my Alt button, I can select this color here, any color here. I can select whatever I want. But let's get this gray. Now you see my swatch is updated to a gray, and now when I paint, it'll be it'll be gray. So let's just kind of get like a, a rough look there and you can switch out the different brushes and let's just get a bunch of different brush strokes in here. Okay, so you can grab any of these and make it look all rad. And varying your brush size will make it more believable as well. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. So that, that looks cool. Maybe maybe like a little, uh, little of this little speckle in here. All right, you guys happy with that? I am. Okay, so uh, we got our brush strokes in. Let's look at our reference again. So we do, we're doing ours a little different. We're taking some artistic license. Okay, and uh, let's make this, let's make this roll, this tear away paper. Okay, let's get rid of our uh, reference for a minute. And I'm going to create a brand new layer by going down here and hitting create a new layer. Let's move it just above our gray eyes. So what I'm going to do is take a rectangle, rectangle marquee, and I'm going to just kind of make a shape that's similar to that roll shape that they had. Theirs is at an angle. We'll move it at an angle here in a minute. I can take my 
paint bucket tool and select a color again and fill it in. I can take my brush tool and a nice airbrush type brush. So it's got a soft edge. And again, I can select some different grays. I'll select like a really dark gray. Okay. And if I hold um, shift while I paint it, it's going to go straight up and down. Okay. And so I'm going to select like a highlight and move the color or move the uh, brush size down a bit. Okay, so now we're getting a, a really cool rounded effect. I just want to make it look round. Okay, so you can stare at a pole or something that's round and try to get ideas of how to do that. Just kind of stare at something round and shiny. And that'll help you out. I'm just selecting and holding shift as I move the brush up, okay? So to deselect it, I'm gonna go to select and deselect and now we have our rad roll. Let's hit the, uh, get the move tool on and let's hit the show transform controls again. And let's angle that a little bit. <clears throat> and let's pull it out. And let's hit enter to say yes, that's where I want it. So we got that. Let's look at our reference. See? <clears throat> so we got that kind of cool look. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I see that he's got a duplicate version. He or she, whoever made this, has a duplicate version here. Let's try that. So right click, duplicate that layer. Okay, and now we have another version of it. Let's put it behind. So I just drug that layer behind the other roll. Okay, let's move it down a little in size. Now see our, they have two, you know, now we have two, but he's got this cool drop shadow. Let's see if we can mimic that. Um, there's a couple ways to do that. You can do it with the paintbrush or you can just double click in this area and we can go to the layer style and do like a drop shadow. Okay, it looks pretty good like that, but if I click in the drop shadow, it'll bring up all these Area. So like here's the angle, you know, I'm pretty happy with that right there. You can mess with the size of how much it's doing its thing. So I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm going to hit OK. Now the other thing I see is they got this ripped stuff. Let's see that. So we're going to create a, another new layer. This will be our ripped whiteness. Uh, let's layer these. Roll one, roll two, and we'll call this uh, the white rip. So that's going to be the white rip texture on this layer. Super easy on this one. Uh, you could probably just um, let's grab our lasso tool and. Let's do, um, remember it's got to be kind of rough, so you're going to kind of just, this is, I'm just using the mouse, okay, I'm just kind of doing a rough ripped texture here. It helps if you make the sound effects. And if I hit plus, I can add to it or not hit plus, but hit uh, shift, I can add to it. Okay, so let's see what that looks. Let's grab our paint bucket tool. Let's grab some white. Let's make that a little more white. 
Okay, let's have a look at it. If I hit Control D, it'll deselect. So I see uh, in here we're going to need a little more. You can take your paintbrush and finish it off. I'm hitting Alt to get, grab that color. Let's take uh, let's take this thing that we were using a minute ago. Okay, and just kind of roughen up the edge there. Make it look kind of paper, papery. So you can try different different brushes and see if it makes it more believable. And so some areas are smooth and some are not. Okay, this is looking good. Looking good. So let's take a look at it again. They kind of fizzle it out so it's real thin at the end. Let's do that. Let's take our eraser tool and I can just do an eraser tool like that. They kind of just fizzle it out there. If you mess up, just hit undo and get at it again. Okay, cool. Yeah. Now let's bring the white rip below the rolls. That way that shadow kind of goes over that white rip right there. You see that? So let's duplicate this. Duplicate by right clicking on the layer and it'll give me a copy. And I can do another one down here. Hit D, uh, if you move it in size, you have to hit return to enter it. So let's take a look at our reference again. So that looks pretty good. You know, I think that looks pretty good. But let's see, let's take, let's add an effect to this bottom one. No, this bottom one this should actually be on the bottom. Let's see if we can make it look even more papery. Uh, what could we add? Like maybe like a bevel? Just ever so slightly. Just a tad. And we'll do the same thing to this one. Let's add like a bevel. So we got that. Okay, so we got our rips there. Let's take uh, let's take those rips and use them for up here and down here. So I'm going to duplicate it again. Duplicate. Okay, and these will be our rips for the rolls. So I just need a little section of it, maybe like that much. Uh, I can hit copy and paste. Sorry guys. Every time somebody calls me on FaceTime, I have to close down Illustrator and open it back up. So, and then I'm going to hit, so I just copy pasted that one little section, or actually I didn't, but this is what I want, okay? So I'm going to use this, and it needs to be at the very top, because I want it above the rolls. Okay, so let's kind of rotate it and size it to where it works for our needs. I'm going to take the polygon lasso and just kind of hack off this edge I don't need. 
delete. Okay, if I hit uh, Alt, I can just hit Alt and drag it down here, and, it'll, and I can do that again to get this one. As you can see on my right side of the screen, it's making a new layer as I do that. Let me zoom in here a little bit so I can see what's happening. So tr show transform tools. Um, let's make it a little bigger. Just kind of sizing it to where it looks right. I'll take the eraser tool and you know, kind of customize it a little bit. Same with this other up here. Let's kind of, wait, where is it? I'll just kind of roll these a little bit. So this is cool, photography, this is how you can make your photography a little bit more than just somebody that has a camera. Get real artsy. Okay, so let's get a, on this bottom roll, let's get a drop shadow on that one too. And let's make it even more distance wise. Spread size. Let's do it like that. Ta-da! Look at that, guys. Look how amazing you are. You created a totally cool effect, just like a pro could do. And um, I don't know. How do you like it? I hope you like it. So that's how you do the ripped photo effect in Photoshop to make yourself look like a radical photographer. All right, let's move on to another demo.